$600. <laughs> and today, you know, 30-something uh, years later, you can get a VCR DVD combo for, you know, less than $100. Now that's what should happen under, under uh, capitalism. That's supply and demand, free market capitalism at work. And uh, what, what we're talking about here is the worth of your money going up. That's progress. That's making progress in a capitalist economy. And progress is where your money is not worth less every day. Your money instead is worth more every day. And so just look at your dollars in terms of VCRs. Your dollars are worth dramatically, dramatically more today than they were, uh, you know, 30 something years ago. Dramatically more. Now, I ask why that didn't happen in the housing arena. Because houses are just another commodity and there is more extra housing today than ever before in history. So under the law of capitalism, supply and demand, free market and all this, the risk reward system, then what you'd see is dirt cheap houses. And this is what's supposed to happen. Everybody's money is supposed to be worth more. So not only do we need to work less because there's less there's less need for labor. That's because of progress, because we're making machines to take our jobs, because it's easier for us to, for example, to ride on a lawnmower when you're cutting a big lawn than to push a, a mower through it without an engine even. Much easier, dramatically easier. So, you know, you got to understand what's going on here, that that's not a bad thing, that our jobs are being taken away. But we've all been conditioned and programmed to believe it's a bad thing. No, but what we need is a realistic work week so that we can have full employment. You know, stop putting up with all the bull. Because that's what we're all doing. We're all just, you know, we're so screwed up from this. It's like we're all stuck in this this artificial realm they've designed to screw with our heads. And that's all they're doing. They're mind screwing all of us. And I, for one, don't like to be, I don't like mind games. I don't play mind games on others. I don't like mind games played on me. And it's all bull. Anybody that tries to justify this system the way it is, the status quo establishment, is a liar, a cheater, a thief, or they're just flat out deceived. There is no justifying this system. It's rigged up one side, down the other, folks. So you understand how nice that would be if your money was worth more every day, too. So not only in a true capitalist system, that's free market, supply and demand based economy, not only is your work week in continually being reduced, that's just called progress. That's what's supposed to happen. You should have to do less work and your work is supposed to be easier. We're human beings made the image and likeness of God. It's very natural for us to try to make our work easier. Uh, here I got a little break from the wind right here at the base of this tower. Let me take you up to the top. Right up there. How about that, huh? That's quite a tower, isn't it? Wow. So you've got a continually reduced work week and you, coupled with your currency being worth more every day. That is the state we should have. That is something we do not have. In fact, we've got the opposite. And we've been told that somehow, you know, it's okay, that this is just the way it should be. And, uh, you know, there's nothing we can do. You know, they, we're made to think these people are stupid and incompetent, they're running our lives. No, they're cunning, diabolical, evil geniuses. And they're cutthroat, they're ruthless, they're a merciless gaggle of murderous thugs. I mean, that's what they are. And I'm not making stuff up, folks. I know these people are some mean, mean people at the top. So you don't want to support this system any more than you have to. Okay, this whole thing is just one big rigged game. 
and people don't want to play. I don't want to play. It's a turnoff, man. I mean, you know, prosperity, it sounds so great, success, wonderful. But I can't enjoy it. Why bother to seek something that I already know ahead of time I'm not going to be able to enjoy? Okay, just because I'm smart enough to amass a bunch of money and to say, hey, I'm financially secure. Hey, I'm, I have financial freedom. No. What about my brothers and sisters? That's the person I want to be. I want to care about the least of men. Like Jesus said, you had better do that or else you're not caring about him. It's that simple. You know, you think you're better than anybody else. Well, you got a lot to learn. Anybody that thinks they're better than anybody else has a lot to learn. It's that simple. It really is that simple. And so since in light of the fact that we are just one family, that's the way we should look at this thing. In all logic and all reason, we've got to look at this thing the way we ought to look at it. And the way we ought to look at it is as one family, the family of man, one race, the human race. And if we cared about each other, just like we care about ourselves, just like we care about our own children, if you cared about a stranger in that way, we wouldn't have the problems we have in this country. Okay, folks, the wounds of this nation could be bound up tomorrow if people would just get it together, man, and start really living by the golden rule. Jesus, it's really, really simple to please God and find happiness. But you must do those things. You must honor and love God above all else. He's the only one any of us owe any homage or reverence to. And then what is the other one? Love one another like we love ourselves. So, you know, we've got to really treat others the way we want to be treated in all our business, in all our affairs. Not some of our affairs, all of our affairs. And that's something that we've really got to, you know, not just talk about, but we've got to do. We've got to live. You know, I mean, you know, everybody's got this money stored up. We're all so insecure. And, oh, we got to save money or the equivalent, you know, whether it's stocks and bonds or Bitcoin or gold or silver. If, if it... If it is easily fungible, okay, easy liquidated, easily liquidated, and it represents money in its truest form, because it can be exchanged for services and commodities really simply and easily, and that's what money is, and it's a concept that's wrong, and they make us all scramble around and be insecure about making money, and this is all they really care about, you know, they get us, this is all we really are concerned with, is just making a lot of money and you know saving up our nuts and having that financial security having that financial uh, uh, freedom for ourselves and our kids but you know we're not caring about others and it's a concept that's evil and it doesn't work and they do it under the guise of innocence they say oh well you know what I mean money it's just we have it to facilitate exchange yeah well if that's the only reason then we wouldn't have the the, the economic disparity that we have in this nation Okay, that wouldn't have grown, that would have shrunk. Okay, so don't buy bull. You've got to learn a little basic economics so you can hold your own with anybody. It's very, very rudimentary and simple mathematics to understand things like supply and demand. And what should and should not be happening if an economy is rigged or if it isn't rigged. Okay, and you can tell right away this thing is rigged up one side, down the other, and to the nth degree, okay? That's the state of affairs. There's no semblance of fairness or justice in this system. Not an iota of anything resembling a true capitalism. If I focus this on the water, you can see how windy it is that little sailboat watch it leaning over healing over it's really windy out there See, he's really healing absolutely spectacular If you went around this head right here is a little town called Sausalito, right in that bay. Holy crap! Well, 
almost got blown off the bridge. Yeah, I saw a guy, I told him, I said, hey, if I go over the edge, I didn't kill myself. Tell the authorities the wind blew me over, huh? You got a kick out of that. But you know, in all seriousness, uh, you know, these idiots at the top of the uh, financial food chain, because everything comes down to money. Everything's about money. That's why I'm always talking about money and mixing it with philosophy and spirituality and everything. Because it is, it's all about money. And what these people have turned us into is a bunch of drooling, fear-ridden automatons for them. And, you know, they don't have an end game plan. Their plan is to rid the rid the earth of 85, 90 plus percent of the population is what they want to do. And that's a matter of record. That's a matter of fact. And you can research the Georgia Guidestones if you don't believe me. So that's their solution to, uh, you know, that's their end game solution. So once they've thoroughly and roundly wrecked everything up, and everybody says this is hopeless misery. I don't want to. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to play the game. You know, and people are killing themselves in droves and just absolute misery, and unnecessary suffering everywhere. Well, just remember who did it to us, okay? Just remember what happened here. Just remember this was not by accident. And while I know the awakening is coming, you know, and it's every day it's increasing and people are getting more and more aware and, and the scumbags running roughshod over humanity are being exposed more and more every day. Nevertheless, okay, we've got some hurdles to overcome, big serious ones. And like I mentioned, the solidification of the tyranny is a real issue for me because this is where they developed this permanent underclass and uh, you know and there won't be anything anybody can do anymore because you're stuck in your lot you know like in India or something with the class it's it is classism it's you know they have what they call the caste system so if you're born into a certain uh, you know economic level of financial situation then you're supposed to stay there and just suck it up and not speak out against your oppression and not ever learn about who's doing it, how it's unnecessary, what's what's happening. And these people with all their riches at the top, you know, they think they're so wonderful. They're just a miserable gaggle of thugs, okay? That's all they are. And you know, if they couldn't if they couldn't oppress the people, then their money wouldn't be worth as much. It's by keeping us in fear. And it starts with it always falls on the backs of the poorest first. Sure, the middle class is, you know, they're whining and complaining, and I don't blame them, good, you know, but somebody is gonna have to pay for this problem, okay? And these idiots at the top that caused all the problems, they caused the poverty, they create the need for the social welfare programs, and then they just, they pay for enough people so that, uh, you know, they, they have a critical mass they're taking care of. But when that falls apart, and all these jobs that surround it now, these are jobs that are based in the poverty industrial complex. Whether you're in the social welfare system or if you're in the crime industrial complex, the criminal injustice complex, the debt industrial complex, or the dubious warfare industrial complex, things are going to change. The worm is going to turn. And that day is coming very soon. But here we are, and we still have a lot of hurdles to overcome, but we're hitting the wall. It's really starting to hit the fan, I think. You know, America's not going to allow itself to be turned into a third or fourth world country like these people want, where we've just got homelessness in mass. You know, they don't care if there's 90% of the houses were vacant. They don't care as long as they keep their place. And 90% of the American people were out on the street living in their cars, living in tents and bushes. This is worse than the Great Depression. We had Hoovervilles, people were accepted. Yeah, the economy's bad everywhere, so people joined together and, and you know, law enforcement didn't bother these people. They let them make their Hoovervilles and their, you know, their campsites where they could live together in some semblance of safety. And now all that is gone. Now they just rouse people in the middle of the night and kick them out of areas. And they, they badmouth them on television, saying how they're a biohazard because they're crapping out in the out in the woods or every place and leaving litter 
they don't lift a damn finger to help these people. And these homeless people are not criminals. Okay, if they were criminals, they'd be in prison, getting three meals a day and a, and a, and a bed, okay? The criminals are running our lives.